What's up, what's up, everybody? It's Danny Green here, back with more Inside the Green Room. You guys will be pleased to hear from my teammate Steven Adams and his draft story. It's quite a, a fun one. Uh, but before we get into that, I know H has a big question for me. So what you got, H? Oh, yeah. And then also, as it pertains to that Steven Adams interview, uh, yes, the draft story was hilarious. But I was also, I was also very much intrigued by his uh, comparisons to your team now and uh, how the equivalent of the players on the chessboard to uh, the players that are currently on the team. You made a whole comparison between the chessboard and the Memphis Grizzlies. It's pretty funny and interesting as well, but we'll get to that later. But I did want to ask you, uh, Danny, speaking of players on the chessboard, uh, during yep. this past off season, uh, the, the two teams that you were most recently with, obviously now the Grizzlies and the Philadelphia 76ers, made some moves, obviously involving you. You went there over some, to Memphis. There were some pieces moved, basically, on the <laughs> board, some, basically. Yes. Yes. Some pieces were definitely being moved. Uh, you went to Memphis along with a, a draft pick that ended up being David Roddy. And the Anthony Melton went over to the Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, I would say, especially during this time where Tyrese Maxey has been injured, mm-hmm. the Anthony Melton has been pre- playing pretty damn well uh, for the 76ers. Uh, I think right now he's number two in the NBA in steals. Uh, and I always check the internet just to see commentary. And I see people commenting how well that he's played. And I'm curious for you in this trade and then maybe in any other trade that you've been involved in, when you see the other person having success, Mm -hmm. uh, how does that make you feel versus, you know, but if a player does poorly too, I'm curious, how, what, how does that make you feel on the other side of the trade? I think, I think it all depends um, on a lot of things. (laughs) So um, when guys are traded, they do watch their old team for sure. hundred percent. Um, they do care some, it all depends on if they're happy in their situation that they're, they're happy they were traded. Um, even if they're happy or not, they still watch. But I think if they were upset that they were traded and like the situation they were in and they missed that situation, they're definitely gonna watch closer and maybe I wouldn't say root for them to do bad, but they want to see their team lose and then miss them. Um, for us, I think when all parties are, are playing well, I like to see everybody do well regardless it's because a lot of these guys in this league, I already know I've been around long enough um, and I've built some friendships and relationships with certain guys, regardless of who's in, who's not, and who replaced me with them. Um, you know, I'm rooting for him. So a guy like PJ Tucker, supposedly, I guess I'm going to say I wasn't traded for him, but he's the guy they brought in to be their defensive guy and their, their three-point shooter on the starting lineup. So I would say that he's the guy that would fill the role that I had. Um, regardless of instead of I was happy or not happy being traded, uh, I'm very happy where I'm at for sure. And I'm not saying I wasn't happy where I was before, but I'm happy where I'm at. So it's easy to move on when you're traded to be in a happy place. I root for those guys, but some guys I know definitely check the stats and see the guys that replace them and are rooting for them not to do so well. Or when they do do bad, they're like, see, I knew they missed me. Or you know what I'm saying like, I know they missed me. I know that I know they're upset that they let me go. See, they should have, they should have, they, 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 they let a good one go. Basically they let, you know, one, one got away. That's pretty much how they, they, you know, they talk a little trash. They talk a little trash about the guy that was in their place. Uh, but if the guy does well, they're like, oh, okay. Or, you know, they try to find, you know, a positive outlook on it, regardless of the situation or how it may be. But for the most part, everybody watches their old team. It all depends on how happy they are with their new team. Um, and all the relationship with the guys that have replaced them. So there's many different variables that come into play when it comes to that. Uh, but yes, guys are, are definitely uh, feel a way. And I think for the most part, regardless if they're happy or not, I don't think they want the team that they left to do better. <laughs> so they <laughs> want the team that they're with to do better. But I'm happy for success. I'm glad that he's doing well. Um, I didn't know him well enough, but I said I'm glad that, you know, Tyrese, those are my guys, Tobias, George, those are the guys that I went to Matisse, Shake, you know, is balling out, for getting an opportunity. And seeing P.J. in that system and, and getting, you know, being the leader on that defensive end of the floor, um, I said I'm, I'm happy for their success regardless of the situation. But, you know, I want them to be too successful because then, you know, it may, I wouldn't say take away from me, but you just don't want your team to do that much better or better than you, regardless of said, because I'm in a new, with a new team. You you're want to be the best team. <laughs> yeah, you're a competitor. So you want to be the best team regardless of where you are. You don't want the team that you especially just left to be better than you. Um, so you don't wish too much on their success. But I'm not one of those guys that, that's praise on uh, another team downfall. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think it's an interesting element as well, because it's not as if um, it was a one-for-one trade where mm-hmm. you are expected to like contribute right away. Like you obviously are going to take some time to get right before you start playing. So it's a little different in that sense, but yeah, he's balling out for them. Um, and again, it just shows the importance of 
two-way players in the NBA. And so I'm going to be very interested, For very sure. interested to see how uh, Philadelphia handles their backcourt rotation, especially when Tyrese comes back. Because I think, and Doc has said this too, seeing DeAnthony Melton get more minutes, seeing Shake Milton gets more, get more minutes, lets them know that, hey, these guys deserve some time. But at the same time, you got James Harden and Tyrese Maxey. So it's a very difficult predicament to be it, in. It, it's very <laughs> tough, but it's a good problem to have when you have that type of depth. Depth that that helps your team all around. So because there's nights in, night in, night out, that somebody's gonna get hurt, somebody's gonna sit, somebody needs to rest. So during regular season, you're gonna need that. So yeah, I, I'm glad that things are working well for all those guys, um, all the parties involved, and on our side too, things are going well on this side. So you know we're happy. I think guys are happy where they are. I think David Roddy's happy where he is, um, and the fact that I said that I left Philly not on bad terms. The fact that, you know, I was hurt and they were trying to find a place to where they can still guarantee me that, that makes me still root for them because they do right by me. Memphis did right by me. Philly found a situation. You want all things to, to go well. So um, there are situations where things go bad, but I was in a uh, very fortunate enough to be put in a great situation to where it, it worked out for me and it was in my favor. So I have no bad blood towards Philly for them, you know, getting a piece back that can because they were trying to win now and I wasn't able to play half the season. So getting a piece back that's valuable and also to be able to find me a spot, a home where I'm happy and to be able to still be on a roster team and, and still, you know, be able to get my, my contract. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a, a win-win for both sides, I would believe. And obviously when you start playing, I think, uh, I think it will start to crystallize more for uh, everybody who's watching from the outside. So we'll see how that one pans out, but you talked about depth, my friend, and uh, your team, uh, again, showed that on Monday night, getting the win, even though John Morant wasn't in the lineup. Obviously, Desmond Bain hasn't been in the lineup. Uh, and well, I am hoping. Stephen Adams Thursday, is out. Stephen yeah. Adams is out. I'm, I, I am hoping, though, come Thursday, you know, Jaws got some rest. Stephen Adams has got some rest. Me too. <laughs> and you got some rest. And you guys will be <laughs> nice and prepared. For Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks, Danny, I gotta keep it. I gotta keep it one hundred with you. I have a hard time, especially now that I'm like engaged in football more than I ever been. I have a hard time locking in on NBA regular season games before January. Mm -hmm. But best believe, when Giannis is coming to town to take on the Grizzlies, I want to see what uh, my homie's new team is built with. For sure. Uh, I'm that's sure I'm group. sure you're excited to see how how your teammates respond to a team that's, you know, pretty what they're probably the second favorite to win the NBA title uh coming yeah. to town. Definitely. Um that's a special group. They're a very good team. Championship DNA, playing well, MVP caliber players on their team. Giannis, of course, he's in the, you know, up in the, the top of the ladder. Um, you know, but Every night, night in, night out is a test in this league, especially when you're playing the best teams in the league. So when you play those teams, you want to see what you're made of, uh, regardless of healthy or not. But, of course, you want both sides to be healthy. They're coming off a loss from Houston. I'm sure they're going to come out a little fired up. I don't know if they played in the game before us, but I didn't know they, they, they lost the other night. So I know we're going to get their full on, you know, their best shot or they're going to be fresh or, you know, have a chip on their shoulder, pretty angry. And they're going to play well. They're going to play better than they did against, I guess, against us than they did against Houston. Um so I, I said, I hope Ja is healthy. I hope Steve is healthy. I highly doubt that I'll be healthy. No matter how much rest I get, I don't think I'll be playing. I don't know if Des, Desmond will be playing. I don't think he'll be making that game. Uh, but we will have majority of our guys on that floor. Um, so it will be a good, good matchup. Um, I think the fact that we added Zaire back gives us a little bit more length. would help us some. Um, but, yes, Giannis and Milwaukee are a very good team. And you want to see how you match up against the best teams in the league. So, this could be a finals matchup. You never know. But these are teams that can help you grow, can help young guys, especially are getting in early to get some growth and be able to see how they match up or play against Giannis, a guy like David Roddy or Jake LaRavia, or, you know, even some of the young guys who never got a chance to face up or match up against Giannis and be able to see, you know, what that power is like. And they're going to grow up very fast. So we'll see who's in, who's not in, but we hopefully have both teams healthy and have a good battle on Thursday night. Yep, for sure. So Giannis comes in, uh, he's won two MVPs. And then uh, next week you get one uh, Nikola Jokic. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, yeah, I won two MVPs. Yeah, and he's so and he's so, yeah. You're right. They both won two. So, uh, and he's obviously on another level himself. Uh, when you see somebody like Nikola Jokic and you look at the roster that you're playing with, I know you don't want to be a head coach, 
Mm -hmm. Put on your head coach, uh, put on your head coach cap, shoes, suit, whatever they wear, polo Mm -hmm. nowadays, uh, and tell me how to stop Nikola Jokic with the roster that you currently have. Uh, There's certain guys in this league that you're just not going to stop. They're just special players. Uh, Steven Adams did an amazing job on Joel Embiid, and he still had 35, 25, 35. He had a, still had a pretty good game. And I thought Steven guarded him better than most people I've seen guard him. He was very, very physical, played him well. And I think Steve could do the same with Jokic, but guys are going to get their attempts. They're going to get shots. They're going to get looks. They're going to find a rhythm at some point in the game. But the game plan is to have our team, just like every team, it's not a one-on-one game, help out defensively and, and take on you know the load of stopping, not just Jokic, but Murray, uh, Bones, who's playing well, Aaron Gordon. They have a squad over there. KCP is shooting very well. They have a good – Bruce Brown is playing very well. So I thought, you know, Denver was going to be one of the best teams if they got healthy because last year, the year before, they were really good. And, you know, in the bubble, you've seen how well Jamal Murray was balling out. I know he's coming off an injury. But with him coming back and, you know, Michael Porter Jr. still up in the air, if they get all those guys back, they're going to be very, very tough to beat. But even without them being 100%, you got Jokic, a guy like that, it's hard to it's hard to win. It's hard to beat them. They play well. They play good offense. They they cut. They have a good system. Um, defensively, they got tougher with KCP and Bruce Brown on the wings, um, and Aaron Gordon. So it's going to be a hell of a matchup with whoever's on that floor. But you know they're still building rhythm. We're still building building rhythm. And there's no perfect way or no right way or, or any way to really stop superstars like that. But you can try to contain them as best you can and, and give them different looks. So that's probably going to be the game plan. I'm assuming. Yeah, that's that's the professional uh, Danny Green answer. No answer. I mean, I don't there know. Was no, there's no X's and O's. I don't no have X's to the right hand. You know what I'm saying? Have, no double, we don't have the double personnel. team on the bounce. I would say, I mean, we, we start, I mean, I always, when I said when we guard Joel, you know, give him different looks. They know a double's coming. Sometimes double on one dribble. Sometimes double on two dribbles. Some, sometimes don't double at all. Sometimes double from the top. Sometimes double from baseline. Because a superstar, regardless of how, you know, what What you throw at them, they're going to figure it out. You can throw two or three people. They're going to figure out a way to score on two or three people, whichever. If you keep coming the same way, if you keep, you know, sending a double from this way, you keep doing they're going to figure it out. So a guy like Jokic, the same. We'll try to put, you know, Steven on him, probably put Jaron on him, be quick or low, try to double, try not double. You know, the thing is with them, they're so smart. They know where to put them. So you can't double. You put them at that elbow. You put them in the middle of the floor. Yeah, it's very hard to double. And he's he's so great at passing the ball. He's a, pretty much a pass for his big. And he has it. On time, on target, right on the money. He's firing that thing from corner to corner or baseline to baseline from elbow to corner. He's going to find his shooters, and they're, they're shooting well enough to where you have to respect it. Yeah, no, it's – uh, he is quite the tremendous player. He Every time I watch him, I'm like, man, this guy, he's just really, 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 really good. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see if that team gets healthy. Make sure you say uh, what's up to former Inside the Green Room guest, KCP, for me. Of while course. He's there. Um Dog. Yeah, and uh, I will say, as we get ready for the Stephen Adams interview, I will say uh, I don't want uh, too much congratulations for this or too much acknowledgement for it, but I will say my dedication to this podcast has hit a new level, Danny. Oh, really? Do Mm -hmm. tell. Before we get into that, before we get into that, I do mm-hmm. want to not say congratulate you, but I want to wish you and Amjad a happy birthday from us and the people that are listening inside the Green Room fans. Amjad Osman, he's the brains behind this operation. Birthday just passed a couple of days ago. Harrison, birthday is tomorrow. When this drops, it'll probably be his birthday at this point. So be sure to show passed. love. Wish them happy. They would have passed. So wish them a happy birthday. Yeah. Show them some love. We're getting older, you know? So but go ahead. Get back to your, <laughs> congratulations back to your dedication. Okay. Yeah, no, congratulations no, that, on getting older. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. <laughs> no, that was actually it because uh because of my dedication to the podcast, we were recording this on Monday night, right after your game, which te- which te- which teeters into midnight, which teeters into my birthday. And uh yeah. I love you to death, Danny. But well, there are better ways that I can spend my birthday. I love our <laughs> audience to death, but there are better ways that I can spend my birthday. And with that being said. Mr. Steven Adams is on the way. Hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everybody? We are back. We're more inside the green room. My guy, Steven Adams. And I forgot this name, but I'm going to ask you, what do they call you in the Chinese name? What was your Chinese nickname? Oh, my Chinese nickname. Um, no, they just call me Aquaman. I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh, okay. Man. Okay. They call me Aquaman. Everyone well, the, Aquaman. the one and only everybody called it the one and only Aquaman, this guy. So before we get into it, we had uh, we had Jaron on earlier. 
And my mm. first question to you, and I, I kind of know this, this answer or why. And um, we asked him because he's big in fashion. He does have an upcoming thing this Saturday for his, his brand. So, you know, I shouldn't say brand like this, but big shout out to Jaron and his brand that he's got releasing. But um, he said if we picked one person on the team who we want to shop in his closet. And he mentioned you. Why do you, why, why do you, yeah, he wants you to, yeah, he, at all people, he said you would shop in his closet. I think it's because of the, the, the height, the size, but. Um, to I shop, he, like I would go and pick stuff out of his, his closet. Yeah. What do you, what do you think about that? Oh, I think he's, yeah, I think he's bloody a little bit delusional, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the stuff he wears, bro. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steve got the, you got the simple drip, man. Yours is a little bit more, yeah, it's, you know. It's simple. I mean, I, I'm, I'm more of like the, you know, the, kind of like the old man type game, the suits and shit like this when it's, uh, when, it, when the time is right, you know. Oh, okay, some, I like that. Stuff, like, he, he showed up. He showed up in like a sweater made of feathers or some shit like this. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like an L boy. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like Big Bird, huh? Yeah, mate. Okay. Well, dude. Former ge former guest on the show, uh, Mark Sp Mark Spears from ESPN and Anscape. Actually, he did an interview with Herb Jones from the New Orleans Pelicans, and mm. uh, Herb Jones says all he wears to the games are team gear at all times. Uh, doesn't spend any on any other money on clothes outside of you know I guess the necessities. So there's that. All right, another rapid fire question for you, uh, Mr. <laughs> Adams. Um, why did Jeremy Sochan pinch your nipples? Oh, the like the boy from um, San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> like, I'm, I mean, I'm 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 you know kind of. Filtered it down to like, okay, he's trying to, you know, throw me off the play or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, what he was. But I was like, dude, he could have done anything else. <laughs> just like, we want to just like pinch my nipples, dude. Like, yeah, I didn't dude. see when that happened. When did that happen? When did that take yeah, place? Yeah, it, was like, it was the very last play because like we're, I was at the elbow. I had to guard him because um, Poodle was out. So they fought oh, okay. for that last play. And then I, I had to guard him at the elbow. And then I was checking out their play just trying to see if it was like familiar with what I've seen them run in the past. And like, yeah, he was just like, while I was looking, he just like kind of came with you, just like, yeah, push me. And then like, you grab it, then pinch my nipples. I was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> <It's like> a, <laughs> get up off of me, bro. That's hilarious. Where, where does that rank in the most awkward interactions? Uh, this was this, this is a PG-13 show, so don't go crazy. But <laughs> where, where does that rank in the most awkward physical interaction that you've had on the court? That wasn't that awkward, dude. It was just like a... You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, it wasn't actually that weird. I was just like, I was just like, oh, this bastard's trying to bloody like, get me off my game. Get out of here, you bloody duck. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Oh, man. Speaking yeah. of looking in the huddles and looking at the plays, when you first heard I was coming to Memphis, was there a game in mind that came to you that we played against each other before I got to Memphis? It was uh, just our playoff series, bro. There wasn't like one particular game, but it's like our whole game plan when I was with OKC against you, it was just like, yo, make sure Danny Green doesn't get off. <laughs> and it was so difficult, dude, because you guys, there was like a play. You guys always ran this like hammer play. Yeah. This hammer play. And it's so annoying, dude, because like we know it's coming, <laughs> but then we're just like one step behind the end of the three. And it's just like, <laughs> Manu was very good with that. He would go drive dude. baseline. Yeah, throw a hook baseline. pass. Him and Boris would throw a hook pass that would get yeah. there. DL, yeah, was... caught on the right block and then spin base. And this guy would jump so far out of bounds and then whip it. And you're just like, dude, you can't like stop the pass. It's like, dude, this pass is getting to the freaking to the corner. And then it's just it, corner fucking bounds. I was like, it was one of my favorite plays, man. But yeah, our series, we had some some unbelievable playoff series. We played probably at least two or three against yeah. each other. We mm -hmm. went down to the wire. You guys yeah. got us. You won four straight on us one time. I think we played. You guys won six game series. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all got. You guys ended Timmy's. Timmy's last game, I think, was against you guys. Yeah, that uh, was so, not OKC. Okay, yeah, man, that was yeah. Timmy's goodbye game. So we had. So we had a hell of a. We have a, a hell of a stretch in the playoffs. Yeah, dude. No, yeah. It, was, it was freaking awesome, dude. Like those were those were the best. Those were the best uh, learning experiences for me, because like the way the the type of basketball you guys were playing was yeah. like uh it's you see that a lot more nowadays you know what i mean like yeah that's how for play. sure it's very speak speaking of shit, don't like, mean to cut you off but i remember we spoke about this in the locker room and coming out you did one year at pit correct yeah coming out you 
did a workout with San Antonio. Is that correct? No, I didn't. I wanted okay, to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but coming out of the draft, you were excited. The one of San Antonio was one of the teams that you really liked because of their style of play. Yeah. Is well, that- yeah. Uh, out of all the teams, I didn't, I didn't watch NBA, but mm-hmm. like it just seemed when I watched um, my brother mentioned San Antonio to me and Tim Duncan. And then I just like, I, I watched, watched like the game plan and stuff. And I was like, oh, yo, that, that'll fit like how I want to play. You know, I mean, it ain't it ain't so much like ball dominant this and kind of spread out and just one man band and you just kind of space out and just wait for you to, you know what I mean? It wasn't so much yeah. that. It's a constant movement and defensively, it's hard to keep up with that. And you end up getting like easy shots, layups, open threes. And I was like, dude, that's like, that's a, that's a good way to play. You know what I mean? No. Now, were there talks of you getting drafted there when you were coming out? Were there talks of you possibly getting going there and playing there? Dude, I'm not sure. Like, I, I've oh. I heard a few different things because, like, um, I mean, I was back home, and then um, mm-hmm. me and my boy got a pig, and we put it on a spit, and I I posted <laughs> a photo of it, like me and him holding it, and then Please, like. Be- before you could get forward in the story, please explain to us what that is. What is a pig <laughs> on a spit? What does that What does that mean? Yeah, you just get a yeah, you get a pig. It's alive. Yeah. And then okay. You, then you kill it. And then you okay. It, and then you. You guys had it. a pig, and you okay. Yeah. You and posted you, it on us. Yeah, throw it on a spit, and then you got pig on a spit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so me and I took okay. a photo like this, and this was like pre-draft stuff, and we just oh, I posted the photo, and then one of one of my co- coaches from New Zealand, like, um, he's he's good friends with like uh, Sean Marks. Yes, Sean Marks. Sean Marks. Working, Sean Marks was apparently working for San Antonio, so then yeah. Sean Marks apparently told him was just like, "Dude, what the fuck is he doing? Don't <laughs> let him go out hunting or anything like this. Like, <laughs> you gotta keep his ass like you know healthy and shit. Like the draft is coming up, and then yeah, he was just like, I don't what? know. So that was like the only time I heard like, oh, like they might be interested. Yeah, wow. That's, on draft that's day, funny. you're you're hunting pigs and posting on on, wow. All right, <laughs> living just living uh, living life, mate. You know what I mean? Catching up with the lads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, going back to those uh, San Antonio Spurs and OKC uh, series. Uh, do you remember? And I, I'm sure Danny does. Do you remember Danny's dunk on Kevin Durant? Nah. <laughs> it was Danny, very, can you can you remind them? Really? Please? So you crushed it dunk, on the front. It was like a quick, you know, got to the rim before him type of dunk. Yeah. And this was this is actually when he was in Golden State, Harrison. So it wasn't in OKC. I don't think I got I don't no, think I got him. One, a, no, you got him with him when he was in OKC. Did I? I only remember when he was in Golden State because I remember well, I'm going by Steph. Now. I went by Steph and it was a quick dunk. Like it wasn't like body to body. It wasn't people say dunked on. I haven't really dunked on anybody like body. It was like I got some except for Greg Paulus. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. seen that joint. Yeah, I just watched yeah. it just now. Yeah, it was when he was oh, with, you, uh, Golden State. Yeah, so it was a quick. Oh, that was it. Oh, you right. Yeah, so that I baked him at the wing and just blew past one leg. Yeah, you had one leg in you, bro. Yeah, back then you're a two foot jumper. (laughs) Back then, it's the only way I get there fast. You know, two feet is too slow. I couldn't have. I'm not fast enough to get to the room or two feet. Yeah, yeah, man. So that was one of my highlight days. One of my good days in in the young years. Then you got the next rapid fire. Yes. So we're continuing this rapid fire. We heard this is a thing. When fans ask you for autographs, in order for them to get one, do they have to say please? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. That's my, so uh, for those who are watching, if you want a Stephen Adams autograph, be yeah. sure to say please, or you will not get one. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just my pet peeve, bro. It's just like I don't know. People just yeah, cause like people, you you know, bro. People come up like, yo. Come get this photo. And I'm like, yeah. Americans, man, Americans. They are, you know what I'm saying? Us Americans, they like said, I, I noticed it when I lived out in Canada and other countries. They're definitely a little bit more considerate, a little bit more have, you know, some, some a little more, ma- like not all Americans, I'm saying not all, not all Americans, but a good amount of us have lost manners along the way. Yeah. And forget to say, please, thank you, or excuse me, or pardon me. You guys say it a different way, but you guys are a lot more nicer. Americans are just, not I'm saying we're not nice. We're not as nice as Canadians yeah. or Australians or New Zealanders. Like, is, is that what they call you guys, New Zealanders? Yeah, Kiwis. They call us Kiwis. Kiwis. Yeah, mm-hmm. but to be Kiwis. fair though, dude, it's like like a lot of them are flustered because like it's, it's they're in like a weird situation too, where um I don't know they want like you know it's kind of like almost like approaching a girl for the first time, like you know what I mean? Yeah. 
holy shit. <laughs> He'd probably come off as like a super creep. Are you trying not to be a creep? You know I mean, it's probably the same, same type of yeah. vibes. So I was like, I get it, but still was like, yo, say please, dude. Um, yeah, I give him, I give him For some sure. neat way, you know what I mean? For sure. For, the, for those that are, are are watching or listening, you could probably tell uh, that Stephen Adams has a, a very uh, jovial personality, but uh, if you watch Steven Adams, you probably think differently of him on the court. Uh, you guys recently played the Philadelphia 76ers, and there was a number of videos on the internet, uh, Steven, where uh, people depicted you, or I pointed out how much you got under Joel Embiid's skin. And so I'm curious, who would be in your starting lineup of current players that you do not want to excuse my language mom fuck with <laughs> i don't want to like what do you like, mean like as in on the court like if, if 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 all of a sudden the basketball game became a royal rumble out of oh, nowhere no. you're um, starting you're starting five position by position to be fair i don't think there's many people steve i don't think steve is afraid of or scared of so there's not no, many people on his team care on his team if it's a who is he ball, riding with bro. Ah, uh, mm. like on our team in Memphis. No, no, in 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 the course the of who league. he's played with. Yeah, the whole okay. league, who you've played with, who uh, you've played against, who's on your starting, who's in, who's on your Royal uh, Rumble like starting five. With, like, oh, if you played with, uh, he didn't play okay. with Zach Randolph, but like if you play played with, with Zach play Randolph, against, like, yeah, uh, there'll be probably point guard will be Drew Holiday. Mm. Um, he's he's just a solid dude. <laughs> Yeah. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, shooting guard, maybe Grayson, mm. Grayson mm. Allen, yeah, old boy, and then uh, James Johnson. Do you know James Johnson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we know James Johnson, black belt, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, you're yeah, a bona fide killer, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be real, you better watch out for them legs, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah he, <laughs> he, he got some stuff to him, bro. Yeah, he's yeah. got some stuff. Um, and then four, yeah, I don't know. Four or five, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about the four or five. There's no there's there's any bigs that you play with that were like, all right. He's not kind of... he's not giving anybody no credit at those positions. That's what it is, Danny. No, yeah. no, they're, they're just like, you know, you get some good, you get some good dudes. But if it's like Royal Rumble, it's like <laughs> you're not sure. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, like we're yeah. tall, man. We're kind of gumpy, you know. What I mean? Like we're, <laughs> we're not coordinated, we're just big tigers, you know what I mean? So like, is there any other is there other guards like you know, Russ on that list, Russell Westbrook, maybe, or I don't know who you might have played with that's like uh, maybe Russ kind of fight, a... <laughs> <laughs> I seen him punch, mate. Uh, it, like, it doesn't look good. <laughs> he's a tough he's a tough gun though, but yeah, maybe not a boxer, sure, but sure. he's a tough gun. But that's what's but, weird. Uh, is it like a Royal Rumble as in like fighting or no? Oh, just like just like tough guy on the NBA, you know, you don't oh, want that you don't you don't want them to foul like, you type of thing, or or you know, like, players are intimidated on in the court. Yeah, whoever came to mind, MMA, UFC, cool, that's cool too. But I mean, there's also you can pick like two that. guys that like or tough on your two two tough guys that you played with that were like, all right, yeah, those are guys I'm riding with, and they they're not I mean, to be messed yeah, with. It'll be, it'll be like I mean, for the bigs, I mean, it's different for the bigs. It'll be like Zion at the four for sure. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah. he's a he's a tough dude, bro. That yeah. bro gets like hacked every night. And just, yeah. just doesn't bro, feel dude, it. Yeah, even when when I was with him, bro, he broke his thumb or some something like this, and he just kept playing. I was like, dude, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's an animal, dude. <laughs> did you did you ever play with Julius? Did you play with Julius at all? Nah, nah, yeah. Oh, okay. I only played against him, bro. He's a, he's a tough bastard too, eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. A tough boy, man. He's strong. I seen somebody swipe down and smack the ball, and it did, didn't go anywhere. And he just kept. Going through the lane and laid it up like it carried carried somebody to the basket with him. I'm like, holy yeah. shit! That's like a yeah, those dudes, are, those dudes are impressive, eh? Hey? Because it's like it's like that Giannis type basketball yeah. where like, dude, they just hold you and then they're carrying you the whole way, and they're still able to explode and tongue in your leg. Cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, all right, Steve. So uh, that you know that cap covered our rapid fire. We do want to get to Russell Westbrook in just a little bit of a moment, but. I uh, want to uh, wind back the clock a little bit. So you played in the NBL, um, to, and then, but you were unpaid in order to keep your college eligibility. Um, yeah. Going back to those unpaid days, and you fast forward to now, 
could you have envisioned cashing the checks that you are now or getting the direct deposits, however you guys get them? Did you, did you envision this moment or these moments that you're currently living in? No, not at all. Um, I mean, the M MBA wasn't actually planned for me. Um, I was just trying to make it to college, um, get a free degree and stuff like this, right? But then college ended up being like, I didn't have a good, I didn't have a good time at college. Like, you know I mean? Like it was just pretty, yeah, I had a pretty bad experience. So then I just left after the first year and I was just like, oh, I'll just throw my name in to the NBA, see what happens. Um, but I, I knew I wanted to carry on playing basketball. So whether that was international or in the NBA, like, I didn't care. I just wanted to play basketball. And then, yeah, dude, just did a bunch of workouts, about 13 workouts for different teams. And they ended up getting drafted. So it was pretty, it was pretty sick, but never was in the, um, never was in my, in, in, in my mind at all. Just kind of fell into place, you know? Mm. I, I'm yeah. curious. I'm curious. So you said you didn't, you didn't think it was going to happen. Um, and you just decided to declare, was there one certain workout where you're like, oh yeah, now I'm going to get drafted. Or was there a certain play that you did had or a certain like, person you went against and in a, in a workout, you're like, nah, they're going to draft me now. I'm going to get, I'm going to be in the NBA. Was, what was that moment for you? Nah, no moment, bro. I just, uh, I just assumed I wasn't going to get drafted. Um, mm. <laughs> I, yeah, honestly. And wow. I, I did like video logs and shit like this. I used to do videos for the people back at home, like in New Zealand. Um, just used to try and like, you know, just like, oh, this is what my experience is like. Look at this facility. Like let them see the facility and whatnot. Yeah, I'll try to milk it, dude. And then even like, even when I, the GMs and stuff will take me to dinner, I'd be cashing out, bro, getting extra meals. <laughs> <laughs> I was treating it like the last supper type thing, bro. Like, oh, bro, food, <laughs> get some free food, bro. <laughs> I was like, yeah, cash now to ask for extra equipment, like extra gear. Cause like, that's what's cool. It's like when you do the workouts, you actually get to keep the gear. Yeah. So like my brothers have like most, uh, most of like the gear that's like got Sacramento Kings and Boston. I used Celtic. to keep the gear too. Yeah. I used yeah, to keep, so all, the keep gear. all the gear, bro. Ask for extra socks. They had the old school socks back then too. So they had the old school white socks mm -hmm. and those were like so good. Yeah. I mean, the ones now, the they're thick ones, like, yeah. Yeah, the thicker yeah, the ones, ones now they got some sort of like, you know, I don't know, some sort of, I don't know. Apparently yeah. A little different. Yeah. They're just different. They're tight, mate. You know? So, 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 so Steven, you were the number, but you were the number 12 pick in the draft. When, yeah. when, okay, at some point you knew it was going down. When was that moment? Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, um, when they said I was invited to the green room and then I asked what the green room was and they were like, oh, dude, that means that like you have a really high chance of going like top like 15 or 12 or something like this. And I was like, I was like, oh, sweet, dude. Like, you know, <laughs> hey, how good. <laughs> so then I asked them, so I bought my bought my brothers over. And then like again, it was still like, oh, like potential might get drafted. But then we were like, shit, man, like, yo, they're giving free food again. <laughs> get some food, boys. Get the food. Get the food. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. And then yeah, I ended up getting drafted um by Oklahoma, which was sick. And then yeah, it was sick. So Speaking of your family and, and taking videos and, and sending them back home, how, how important was it for you to stay connected with your, your, your family and folks back home? No, for sure. It's uh, definitely, it's definitely like, yeah, I mean, it's a big deal and now. Just, um, it just keeps you grounded, you know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. and you know, those are my people. It's like, it's one of these things, bro. Like you go home and you see people who look like you and talk like you and same mannerisms, uh, you know, it's something special, you know, you kind of, it kind of gets lonely when you, Go away from that you know you miss it a lot so it's definitely important it's easier now with technology and stuff you just facetime them and then you realize like man they are dicks man yeah back then they had what they have back then they had a uh, skype and then you had to get like calling cards yeah, and skype, a lot of different yeah, back then yeah it was from yeah there. but old school brother so now it's a little bit more of the basketball side of things and speaking of your time in OKC and you talked about some of your experiences of what you learned and how much you learned from there. How much of that are you using for now and teaching the young Grizzlies guys uh, like some of the things, what are some of the things you learned then that you are using now to teach some of the younger Grizzlies guys? Yeah, um, I don't know. There's not much. I, I don't carry over. It's, um, it's just mostly mindset. The, today's game's a lot different than mm -hmm. when I came in. You know what I mean? And I, I, I think I came in, I was drafted for like a specific purpose as well, because I came yeah. into a winning team. And so like, you know, it wasn't like you see some of the young guys that go on some of these like teams that they don't, 
they're just rebuilding and mate, they just like you know they develop them by you know you make any mistakes that you want when i jumped on i was like they just came from the finals you know what I mean? And then it's like, yo, we need an extra piece. And so, like, they kind of not looked at me like that, but, like, I managed to, like, come off the bench and come into rotation, you know what I mean, as, like, a secondary big. I was behind Kendrick Perkins. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, dude, it was just, like, that experience of just, like, building it to that point. I don't know. I kind of share my story sometimes with some of the some of the um, Memphis dudes here. They take something from it, they do, but like, you know, if they're curious, they ask and you know, I'll provide them with that sort of story, whatnot. The biggest, the biggest thing though, like that I try and teach them is um is what Nick Collison taught me, which was super mm-hmm. valuable because I, I think too much. I think a lot, mm-hmm. like in the games and stuff. Simple quote, bro, is just uh, less brains, more cock and balls. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Uh, fuck, yeah, it works, mate. Yeah, it's funny, bro. That's, that's a great way to live. That's a that's a that's a <laughs> That's, yeah, one, to live by. Yeah, that's one to live that one. by. Let's spread that one. Let's spread that one. Oh, that's good. Uh, spe- speaking of body parts, uh, I want to get to Russell Westbrook, but now that um, you, you help me think <laughs> of, I know, I know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Give me a moment. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> uh, you also played. Uh, I'm going to talk about Westbrook in a moment, but you also played with Serge Ibaka, who's known to have some of his former teammates on his show and they eat random body parts of random animals have you ever gotten uh how hungry are you invite no dude you never invited (laughs) me the bastard yeah (laughs) that's crazy because i feel like you maybe because he knows you you you're open-minded you'll eat more things than other people you probably have eaten he likes to put on people that dare like it's like a What's the show they have where you you know you you, you don't want to eat the, the worms? What is this? Fear factor. Oh, fear fear factor. factor. He's making yeah. like a fear factor situation. Like he wants yeah. to put people on that are scared to eat certain things to make it more interesting. When you're on, you're probably like, oh yeah, I eat this every day. Pig, cool. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, deer. You know, I had I had deer yesterday. This is you know, it's, you know cook it a little better, mate. You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. So <laughs> that's probably why he hasn't had you on. Yeah. But hopefully, he has had you on. Yeah. Um, your wow. favorite memory. Of playing with Russell Westbrook. Um, favorite memory. Hmm. Cause you were there when KD was there and when KD left and you had Russ by himself. Um, was he different then? Did he get more meals? Did he, you know, treat you know, when he had his oh, yeah, brand? When KD, when KD, yeah, when KD left, he uh, yeah, it was a different dude for sure. Mm-hmm. Um it's just a different, yeah, it was a different that was, that was a different year. That was when he was popping off. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you get those crazy stat lines like a 50, 15, and like 13 yeah. night or something. Yeah. Crazy like, 50 point triple doubles. Yeah, was he know, a, was he like stuff. more of a leader? Did he have more of like a thing with the team? Did he make sure he you know became more of like a I don't know, like a father figure to some of the younger guys? Uh, you know, was there anything at any point in time where he came in and you were like, you know, I like this, yeah. Russ, or this is this is something that's gonna stick with me. Yeah, maybe he just came in with like a like the ultra killer instinct mode. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like so, I mean, yeah, the brother just like was coming in real hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't so much like the nurture stuff. It's just like yeah. you know, he was intense. Was okay, yeah, super intense, which was good because it's just like we, you know, we, we needed to like get some some sort of results, and so I mean, he, he did it whatever he needed to do, um, <laughs> to do it and try to like bring us along. You know what I mean. Spe- speaking of those times with uh, Russell Westbrook, there were when there were some people who tried to, I would say, uh, didn't hold as much value in the rebounding portion of his triple doubles because they were claiming that Stephen Adams was giving away his rebounds. Your response? Oh, my response. Um... No, nah, it wasn't, bro. It's just just boxing out. I I box out. I box out for anyone, dude. I don't give a I don't give a shit about the defensive rebounds, brother. It's like <laughs> as long yeah. as someone gets the ball and we don't have to play defense anymore, I'm yeah. happy. I don't give a shit. Man. It just means that that <laughs> position is over. We, to, we, we don't have to rotate. <laughs> so I don't care who gets it. Now, offensive yeah. rebounds, that, that's different. That's the one that yeah. I, got. I, I really got the offensive rebound. I'm like, yo, we need more positions. So I really, you know, that one, that one I care about more. But it's just like defensive ones, like, like someone, someone on our team get it, please. 
Yeah, so. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Um, this is the last uh, Russ question, and this is about his time in L.A. And obviously he's gotten a lot of negative media uh, reactions. He's been playing better. Um, first, what was your reaction to when he was getting a lot of that, especially being home in L.A. and getting the negative uh, of feedback or negative, negative criticism? And now that he's playing better and accepting his role coming off the bench, is that something you ever thought he would ever do? Like, give us your your uh, thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I always knew that he would, like, accept the role. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dude, yeah, the dude just wants to win, man. You know what I mean? And even if he has like, you know, I don't know, you may think like he's kind of crazy and shit like this. Like the brother just wants to win. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own, own idea. There's no like perfect formula to winning. No one has like a perfect recipe ever. And it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so like, yeah, you might believe it how to win is this way. And someone else might believe it's that way. Like, fuck, who knows, mate? But you're yeah. kind of you're you're just a team. It's not more like about Russ. It's the mm -hmm. team as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the, the whole team needs to come together and agree on one thing. And that's how you'll probably, that is more likely to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't have this idea and that idea and this idea all going at once. It just won't, that, that, shit, that shit won't work at all. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, that's my take. So it's just like, even if, you know, people put a lot of pressure on him specifically, but like, I don't know, I, I kind of look at the whole team sort of thing, like the whole team dynamic. It's like, oh shit, like, <laughs> yeah I mean, well, he, just like one dude dude like, you know, yeah, yeah. he got a lot of the blame right? i'm glad he's doing better i'm he's at home i'm glad he's playing better and their team is doing a little bit better but i'm, I'm glad they're not blaming him for a lot of times because being at home that could be tough well, you know being in la yeah that's what yeah, was, being in la for sure but crazy it's just like i didn't realize how like you know people say like you know it's tough to play in like the big market like la and stuff and then to seeing all this you're like shit man they are they are really, they really yeah, it's hard. tough when you see a guy like Russ go through, he's going through, and you realize how tough it really is. Oh, there. Yeah, like he's one of the right. most, he's one of those guys that doesn't really get wavered and, and can play his game anywhere. But if he's there and he, he's, he's mentally thinking about it or going through it, you're like, man, you know, that those lights, this league anywhere can, you know, can put some people through some struggles. So yeah. Yeah, it was tough to see, but I'm glad he's playing better. Yeah, uh, speaking of, we were talking about what Russell Westbrook is doing so that the Lakers could potentially win. Uh, Steven, you're, you come from a family of winners, to my understanding. Uh, your half-sister is a four-time world champion in the shot put, uh, Dame. And then also Lisa has won a, a world championship in the shot put as well. Uh, yeah. What's in the water over there, bro? What you, <laughs> what you guys got going on? Shit, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know. That's just them. I haven't, I haven't done shit like that. That's just them. The sisters I didn't are know really that. good. I'm trying to yeah. hold it down for the brothers. <laughs> I gotta win something, bro. Like it's a, the sisters are dominating the family right now, dude. I did not know that. They're they're Olympians, huh? They're gold medal. They're gold medalists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both gold medalists. World champions. One of them. So wow. Valerie's a dame. Uh, dame, she got bloody the whole super honorary. Wow. Yeah, she's she's a lot more classier than me we we're talking about a dude like all she gets all like the high-end sponsors like visa you know <laughs> like so you get some real like and then my one is like my friend's pub down the road <laughs> you know, with, with arms, like you know what I mean? that's my spot so i'm just like this is some bullshit dude <laughs> wow have you done a... have you done the shot put like can you are you are you good at the shot put do you know the technique and all that yeah yeah, yeah. so i did shot put like in high school and all that i'm oh, sorry in high school and all that so i went to i went as far as nationals so mm. and then i got destroyed bro like i wasn't i wasn't good like that i wore basketball shoes i was walking around with like a, i always walked around with like a two liter milk carton of milk like i love milk so i used to just crush milk all the time so yeah wow. showed up going in and just <laughs> smash milk and then do my throw but yeah I wasn't good. those guys were pro there's the formula, Harrison. It's not the water; it's the milk. It's the milk. Um, okay. Did the sisters, did the sisters drink the milk? The sisters drink the milk. Uh, no, nah, they don't, bro. Maybe that's oh, what okay. held me back, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, they just, they're right. just, they're just talented, man. They're just talented. We, we got uh two more before we let you go, man. Easy ones. Um, for my I know Santi plays chess. Do you play chess as well? Yeah, bro. You do. You're a big chess yeah, guy. I put him, I so. Put him up. Okay, if there was a non-Olympic activity that you could win a gold medal for, would it be chess or is there something else? A non Olymp uh, non Yeah, what's a non-Olympic activity that you would win a, a, a gold medal for? Well, that's just crazy because there's so many Olympic activities. It's hard to choose it one that's be, non. It could, it could be a sport. It could be a recreational activity. It could be 
the fastest walker, whatever, whatever you think you oh, you do walker, really yeah. well yeah. in. Like, whatever, yeah. whatever hobbies you have, whether it's putting a pig on a spit or whether it's <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I dig yeah. <laughs> or yeah, it, I probably it, will be chess. It probably will be chess, bro. I think. Um, but that just more says like how useless I am at everything else. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm actually not that good at chess. <laughs> so yeah, is that is that where Santi got it from, or did Santi play chess before he uh, came he played, to? The he team? played a few times before, and then like he just see me play because I I played before the game. I I just play whenever like I'm just sitting down or something. I'll have a game of chess. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, dude. And just, Danny, just Danny. Playing, we'll play against each other. Oh. I still I still I still the best on the team. Yeah. I'm, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm Danny, you know time. what you got to do, right? Then What's you got to do. I don't know, Steven, you probably saw it the last game. Uh, so Danny, every now and again, now he's been able to hop into uh, the Bally Sports booth and do commentating while the game is going on. Oh, yeah. This oh, means... Last, yeah. Yo, did you even game, repeat that, Steven? Yeah, last game I did oh, the right. game. So I, I went on TV. So I went to the with Brevin Knight and you know everybody else. I went to talk the game. Last game, I, I went for a quarter, a half a quarter. And I came back to the bench. You probably didn't notice. I did it. That was my second time doing it. So yeah, now that I next time I go back to do TV, which is probably who knows, we have a home stand, so we do it at home games. I might jump back in and do Dude, the TV. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. So H was telling me, what do I have to do now when I go back to do TV? Yeah, that will not necessarily you have to do it on TV, but when you guys get on the plane and mm -hmm. Steven goes head to head with Santi in chess. Since you got to get your reps in, you got to start doing play by play of the chess game now. I got, okay, okay. So, I, then, okay, I got you. So, I'm learning. So, you know, I do my ESPN dig. I have to learn how to do play by play and get reps of talking Mate, play by play. You can make chess sound entertaining. <laughs> you are amazing, dude. That's boring. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> chess, and Steven moves the rook. He's yeah, moves dude, the rook. Yeah, dude, it sounds like it's like nerdy as hell, bro. Right. So, here's the last one before we let you go. Looking at our team and looking at a chessboard, what name the pieces according to who would be what on our team? If you were to describe our team as chess pieces or our, our players, our teammates as you know on a chessboard, who would be what? Who would be a rook? Who would be a knight? Who would be a king, queen? Uh, who would be a bishop? And who are the pawns? Somebody's gonna get upset when you call him a pawn, but you know how right all now. the rookies, all the rookies. Yeah, the I knew pawns, that was coming. The rookies are pawns. <laughs> all the rookies are the pawns, man. Yeah, that's just that's good. Um, Jar will probably be the queen. I know mm. this sounds weird, but yeah. uh, probably be the queen because it moves the most squares. Yeah, yeah. The most movement out of uh, all the pieces. Um, I reckon Santi uh, will. Uh, Triple, triple B, I don't know, Trip is either a knight or a rook. I think a rook. Yeah, yeah. triple B rook. Triple B why, rook. Why is that? I mean, it's like, the, it's it's a valuable piece, but it's like, it's a solid piece on the outside. It's like the bolster, like an anchor. I'm yeah. thinking about like anchor of defense type thing. It's like kind of holding yeah. it together, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's also, yeah, it's a valuable piece. Um, yeah, I don't know. And then others will probably just be bishops and knights. Probably the shooters. So Dez will probably be Bishop, something like this, kind of like that long range. You usually get them. If you fan Keto the Bishop, you got this long range diagonal. Yeah. I reckon him. And you too, bro. You'll be a Bishop too. Bishop. Okay, a Bishop. <laughs> yeah. You'll be a Bishop. Um, Dylan be a Knight. Dylan's definitely Knight, bro. Definitely <laughs> a Knight. Yeah. yeah, he's got some crazy definitely skips. Definitely a Knight. Like Dylan's Knight for sure. Santi might I'd be. I'd probably put... I probably put you. I could put a couple people in the king area because I feel like very strategic, but know how to move like space at a time. Yeah, don't move, don't move that well. <laughs> you, me and you, <laughs> might be, might be the yeah. King, bro. yeah. You just move one square at a time. Like, shit. But like, yeah, like I could put. I could put. <laughs> I put Tyus as a knight too, possibly. Tyus is a knight, Ooh, but yeah, also I very strategic. Nice. That's why he could be could be a king, but he moves a lot better than a king. BC is an uh, interesting one, bro. What would you put BC? Ooh. He might be a rook too. He might yeah, be a rook. Nah, BC yeah. Be a rook. Yeah, Biggs will yeah. probably be the rook. I reckon. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. Sure. Santi, Santi's still a pawn, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Santi's still a pawn. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's good. cool, man. Well, we appreciate you uh joining us, man. Thanks for having you. Thanks for coming on. A lot of love, man. People are gonna love it. Everybody that's tuning in, read, rate, subscribe, review. Um, you know, we got a couple, we had a nice little home stand. Um so yeah, it should be fun at home doing some Christmas, spreading some some cheer and some holiday spirit. Um, I don't know if you celebrate it as, as much as we do here, 
but uh yeah it should be a, a good fun time so you know thanks for joining us man this was this was great this was amazing thank you for having me boys it was bloody yeah. entertaining and thank you so much